Welcome to the first video in decision analysis, which is essentially a structured approach to making decisions, especially big financial decisions or corporate decisions. Um, so the tools that we're going to look at in this video series are the following, the expected monetary value, also known as the EMV. That's like your average return, if you will. Um, your expected opportunity losses. So these are your potential lost opportunities. Um, depending on which decision you make. Um, the coefficient of variation, which is our measure of how variable uh, each of the decisions is, and the return to risk ratio. Uh, again, how much return or how much benefit is there compared to the risk for each decision. Um, and then we're also going to look at payoff and regret tables. We're actually going to organize all of our numbers into these tables and then calculate all of these values based off of these tables. Um, and we're also going to get some simple um, values like our maxi max and our maxi min for starters that'll help us also decide what we should do. These ones are fairly basic, the maxi max, maxi min, these are more complex, the, the EMV, um, CV, et cetera, et cetera. Um, now let's start by looking at what call, what's called the payoff table. Okay, so the payoff table, what is it? Well, it's a way to quantify our risk reward. Um, Okay, it's basically a table with all of our possible decisions that can be made, all of the possible outcomes that can stem from those decisions, um, and these outcomes are also known as events, okay? Um, and we uh, put in the table all of the possible profits or losses related to all of these outcomes, okay? Now, keeping going with the payoff table, let's talk more about it. Um, the decisions. What are the decisions? Well, these are all of the possible options that a company can consider. For example, should we buy land um, in Vernon? Should the company buy land in um, Lumbee? Uh, should they buy both? Should they buy one or none? Um, so there's often more options than you think. So you try to lay those all out. These are called the decisions. Um, and we place them across the rows of the table. So let's look at a sample table here. So here's a sample table. We have decisions one and two, for example. Um, we place them across the rows. If there was decision three, we would add it. Um, just keep going down this row here and add decision three in. So here's where we place our decisions. You could definitely place them down the columns here. Um, I just always place them across the rows. Okay, um, and now talking about the outcomes or the events. So these are what the company has no control over, which kind of stem from what decisions we make. Um, so these are all of our possible outcomes um, and we place them down our columns. Okay, and note we have no control over these events. Um, so these are events that happen. We don't know whether they will happen or not. Uh, we can make our decisions though based off the possibility of those events happening and what our profits and losses are attached to those different outcomes and those different decisions. Um, let's now actually jump into a real example here to make more sense of this payoff table. Okay, so let's start with a simple example. Um, let's talk about a pellet plant. Um, okay, so a large uh, manufacturer of wood products is trying to decide whether to build a new plant. Um, the numbers that I'm going to use, especially in example two onward, are actual real numbers um, from a real manufacturer. Uh, they are actually building this plant now. It will be ready in 2020. Um, they're um, considering building this pellet plant. Um, little note, wood pellets are made of sawdust, wood chips, bark, and other um, organic byproducts and biomass. Um, here's what they look like. Common uses for heating homes, pellet stoves are becoming quite popular. Uh, cat litter is another common use. Uh, demand seems to be very much growing for these wood pellets and they're also a great way to take anything left off of the floor in the plant. Uh, if you're producing lumber, just all those scraps can get put into these wood pellets, which is brilliant and it can be used to heat homes. Um, and same with other leftover bio or organic materials can be put into these pellets. Um, so what the manufacturer is considering, should they build a new plant? If the demand really seems to be growing, they want to meet that demand, let's build a new plant. Um, okay, or should they just keep going the way they are and just keep the existing plant that they have? Okay, um, so let's look at the numbers attached to this. So let's say the profits. So if they build a new plant, um, okay, and here it is. Here is actually an image of a, um, a pellet plant. 
Um, let's say there were no change in the demand. The demand does not increase as they anticipated it would. They would lose roughly $28 million. But if the demand did significantly increase, they're going to gain $93.5 million. No, this is a basic example, and the more complicated ones, we're going to really um, look at all of these numbers in much more detail. Um, okay, now let's say if they don't build this plant, okay? What if they didn't build it? Well, if there's no change in demand, let's say they're going to make $50 million. Uh, if there is a significant increase, they're not going to make much more. They're only going to make $65 million. They're already almost at capacity with the existing plant that they make. Let's see what that payoff table would look like. Okay, so here we are. Um, so here it is. Note that um, the decisions here are listed up top. Should we build a new plant? Yes or no. Okay, so they're listed across the rows. Okay, and the events or outcomes are these guys right here. So in our case, either demand has no change or it increases. Those are our possible outcomes. Um, so we list them down the column. And so here is our initial payoff table. In the next video, we're going to look at this example again, but with a more complicated um, lens on it. We're going to make it a little bit more realistic.